This year alone, we've had Wallet of Satoshi drop support uh, for the U.S. region. We've also seen Phoenix Wallet also pull out of the U.S. region. Now, all of a sudden this week, we saw a post from Mutiny Wallet that they're going to be winding down operations. Granted, Mutiny Wallet isn't the same type of situation as Phoenix Wallet or Wallet of Satoshi. But it does beg the question, what the hell is going on? Welcome back, everyone. Look at that. The market stabilized. We are not all dead. Bitcoin, not dead. What a surprise, huh? What a surprise. But something that is kind of strange is what we've seen this year with some of the wallets pulling out of the U.S., right? Like Phoenix and Wallet of Satoshi. And now, of course, um, this winding down of operations from Mutiny Wallet. So Mutiny Wallet, in a blog post, claims that they're exploring new directions as a company. What does that, what does that really mean? And, and also, you, you kind of also have to wonder, why does it seem so sudden? Is it that something changed drastically? Well, if you dig through their blog post, which I'm going to put a link to in the show notes, um, it doesn't really say much. But I, I did, uh, I was following a thread, okay, and Seed Signer responded back, actually retweeted a Mutiny Wallet when they gave their update. And he said, there's a few customer facing open source projects in the Bitcoin space that are not companies. Mutiny is important for permissionless and private lightning use. Why couldn't someone apply for a grant to maintain, develop Mutiny? Isn't this sort of thing exactly why funding sources for open source exist? So uh, essentially, Seed Signer is making the, uh, the assumption that this is a monetary problem. But according to Mutiny Wallet, in a response back, they claim, no, read the blog. It's not a money problem. Now, I did read through the blog. And unfortunately, I didn't figure out from that blog what the actual issue was. Uh, so I responded back on, on that thread from Mutiny Wallet. Now, I responded back and I said, look, I read, I read the blog. It doesn't explain what actually happened or why you're winding down operations. Um, falling out of love with Bitcoin slash the industry is a result of something that happened, not the thing itself. Now, exactly what this, what the, uh, the CEO said, uh, what Tony said is right here. For one, I've fallen out of love with Bitcoin and the industry. I'm burnt out and unable to continue on as CEO. While we've been figuring out what we should do, Ben has found some great opportunities for himself. Uh, they're talking about Ben the Carman, fellow Bitcoiner, um, which we fully support and understand as he transitions. Marks, our new CPO, has agreed to step up as CEO as he is way more equipped than I am and has the expertise to back it. I'll focus on what I do best, which is backend code and architecture as CTO. Paul will be jumping back into the Chef Paul officer role and is excited about the new products ahead of us. Okay, so, I mean, look, they didn't really say anything uh, in that blog. I mean, that that's just a whole bunch of words. I look, yeah, I've said this a thousand times. I, you know, I worked for a public company. I was customer facing among other things. And I used to have to write, I'm sorry to say this bullshit, right? Fluffy bullshit, just like this in order to appease people. And, and essentially what's happening is, is that you're, you're saying absolutely nothing while writing words, you know, so people read the words, they, they don't feel any kind of closure from it. Um, because there is no resolution from it. So why am I talking about this, right? It's not going to get the clicks and the views. Um, I'm talking about this because I, I do think that this is some type of a symptom of a bigger issue. And um, I don't believe that that blog post clarified really what's, what's actually happening. Now, I think the statements about him falling out of love with Bitcoin and the industry can be, um, that can be telling. Uh, I try to, I try to, pull on my own experiences. And I remember, and again, I understand it's not the same as Bitcoin, but of course, all we have are our own personal experiences that we can draw from. So I'm remembering when I was working at this Fortune 500 company, and 
all of a sudden, like I fell out of love with the work that I was doing. Yes, I know it's tough to imagine. Some people genuinely enjoy what they do. And I was one of those people that genuinely enjoyed what I did. Uh, I was a troubleshooter. I liked to troubleshoot. I liked to solve challenges. Um, I, I also enjoyed managing customer expectations, as nuts as that sounds. It, it It's nice when you feel that somebody... Um, is gaining in confidence because of the way that you're managing something, right? And and they can feel that that you care and that, I don't know, for whatever reason, it made me feel good. Um, but the, the point that I'm trying to make is this. At some point, I also fell out of love with what I was doing and I started to regard it with contempt. I, I started to, I started to hate it, you know? Like I, I started to dread, I started to dread it. And... In all fairness, when that happened, I knew it was time for me to walk away. And it's really difficult, right? And this, I think that a lot of people, maybe they don't say it, but I think that there's quite a few people in very good positions that make a lot of money, right? And that's really what keeps you there because you know, you, you know what I mean? Like, you know how tough it's going to be to go out and get somewhere else. And essentially those golden handcuffs, right, of that of that good check, that'll just keep you going back um, and being miserable. Now, of course, with Mutiny Wallet, I don't think it's the same thing. I, I don't think it's about the paycheck that keeps them coming back. I, I really believe, I'm just drawing parallels between why I left my previous job and how I felt to what the CEO, what Tony explained here in the blog post. And I just... I have this feeling that there's there's something else going on that we don't see. Um, I don't think there's many people that provide funding in the Bitcoin space. Um, so I do think that funding is somewhat centralized in a way. Um, and I think that that might be part, that could be part of the issue. You know, like uh, what if, to a certain extent, what if there's an old boys club, right? Kind of like Wall Street has. You know, and if you're not in the club, then you don't get access to the funding, you know, because maybe you're not building something the way that, you know, this club wants you to build it, you know, because it's not going to necessarily benefit them and what they're building in other projects, right? We don't know this, but look, I can guarantee you this. There's going to be more information that's going to come out. It may take a few months, but at some point we're going to start to, we're, we're going to start to learn the truth. Anyways, guys, uh, you know, obviously I hope that everybody at Mutiny Wallet uh, lands on their feet, uh, finds equally as good, if not better opportunities. Uh, Tony, we really, you know, you and your team, we really appreciate everything that you guys did at Mutiny Wallet. Uh, you guys not only had an amazing concept, but you also did a really great job with branding. Okay. And I know a lot of people singing the praises of that Mutiny Wallet t-shirt. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, guys. Uh, yeah. So onwards and upwards, and I will catch you guys tomorrow. This is all I wanted to talk about today. <laughs>